Right. Uh, for more on this, uh, I'm joined now by Tabang Magwetla, Deputy Minister of Defence. Uh, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for coming in studio. Good afternoon, Paul, and thank you for having us on your program. Now, Minister uh, Mudisa, uh, perhaps I'd like for us to continue with the conversation around ESCOM and the deployment of the SANDF um, around the power stations. I mean, speaking of acts of sabotage, a massive, massive concern. I mean, we can see it with the rolling blackouts. But I suppose there's been questions around how exactly that will work and how long in terms of logistics. Um, <clears throat> well, the deployment of the defense force around our <clears throat> power uh, installations um, was in response to information suggesting that uh, uh, there may have been plans to uh, disrupt uh, power supply. Um, the South African National Defense Force is always on standby to assist the South African Police Service where uh, there is uh, overwhelming situations for the SAPS uh, and there is a need for uh, the force to be multiplied. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, the decision taken was really a precautionary one uh, because uh, there was a conscious responsibility not to fail to act uh, because the information uh, may not have been, you know, uh, accurate. It is always on matters like this proper for people to err on the side of caution. And that's why uh, the decision was taken to have uh, these uh, uh, troops deployed. So when it comes to the, the time frames and, um, you know, how the logistics will work, is there a more in-depth plan around that? Um, well, it's a, it's a matter that will depend on the unfolding situation. It needs to be monitored. Decisions must be informed, must be informed decisions. It should be on the basis of credible information. Uh, so we will, uh, we will see uh, what, uh, you know, the collectors pick up uh, in the coming days, in the coming weeks and uh, we will then respond accordingly. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, perhaps let's maybe just go to, to the social relief of distress support. I mean, that announcement, the amount of 1,250 per month to, to augment uh, the, the pay, pension payout. Man, one, one would have thought that, um, I mean, after being held hostage in 2021 in a Twana hotel, that the process would have been a lot uh, faster and that we would have seen the rollout a lot sooner. What have been some of the challenges? Well, let me first just clarify that there are two interventions here. The first, which is the primary uh, 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 intervention we are <clears throat> seeking to communicate to the public, is the rollout of the military pension. Mm -hmm. Since the policy uh, that informed the act we have that was uh, passed in 2011. There's never been sufficient money in the budget of the Department of Defense to have this pension paid out, even as it was there in the, in the act, even as it was policy that the uh, military veterans should have this pension. Uh, so the intervention by the presidential task team has assisted to release uh, additional funding from Treasury in order for us to roll out this pension. This is mm -hmm. a very critical intervention because as the inter uh, rather, uh, integrating organizations, military organizations, were coming into the SNTF in 1994, there was a cohort of military veterans who were exiting who were not being integrated, but uh, who did not qualify for the special pension that was made available for those who were in exile uh, and who were therefore not gainfully employed in their lives. So that pension said if you were age 35 and below, or if you are below age 35 to be accurate, you were not qualifying for that pension. And those then who were not coming into the defense force, it meant that uh, they would 
live their lives beyond that point without any pension for them. So the uh, policy that we introduced when the Department of Military Veterans was established was that we should provide a pension in order to cover that cohort of the integrating uh, military veterans, mm. I mean uh, soldiers. So, so in the midst of all of that, um, why, why has it taken so long? I mean, what challenges have you faced on the ground in terms of looking at the list of those who qualify and, and trying to assess how the money will be, will be spent? Um, we actually overlooked uh, the amount of work that needed to be done. The department's projection was that we were going to be able to pay this pension from the beginning of April this year in yes. this financial year. And it has not happened simply because the department does not have that capacity. And when the department realized that it did not have capacity, that's when it went outside to get the assistance and they uh, contracted the cheaper, that is the government pensions administration agency to pay out this pension for them. Mm. And uh, even at that point, when they thought that they now had a convincing solution administratively, it was not properly calculated that uh, there, is, uh, uh, there are steps that they needed to go through. Uh, most importantly, the tabling of the regulations in Parliament uh, for 30 days before any movement could be you know, considered on this matter. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> usually it is not uh, the case that all regulations that are put by ministers in Parliament have to be you know, uh, in Parliament for 30 days before they are, they are published. Yeah. Uh, but in this particular act there is that uh, constraint and uh, the timeline that was initially thought of, which was uh, uh, October to pay it out, did not uh, materialize. And we still forced the department to commit to paying out this pension in this month, in December. Mm -hmm. um, and as things stand, we are still not able to pay it out because the regulations were only submitted I think it is around the 12th or the 13th of December. So we'll only be able to act on these regulations uh, on the same uh, on the same dates in January. That is 13, 12, the 12th or the 13th of January will start processing mm. the, the applications. So, so, so in, the, in the processing of applications, I mean, what about, um, I mean, I, I remember hearing Deputy President David Mabuza, who's the presidential task team um, head on military veterans, speaking about the, the, the intricacy, uh, intra intricacies when it comes to the challenges faced by mil military veterans, saying that they're very complex and multifaceted. When it comes to knowing uh, um, who you're paying out and people who may be at home, some, some people have actually passed away and, and their loved ones um, would seemingly need to benefit. How are you going to accommodate the registrations? How is that going to work? Because, I mean... Not everyone is, is perhaps registered at this stage. Uh, <clears throat> no, that's a very important uh, point you are raising. <laughs> the department uh, for some time has not been uh, entertaining the verification of military veterans because of challenges that were there. One of the positive things the presidential task team did was to reactivate the verification of military veterans. It is now ongoing. Um, we have covered uh, several provinces. Uh, there are others that are remaining to be done in the early in the year. But uh, my point is that uh, uh, the military veterans who qualify for this pension um, are military veterans in the majority that are on the system. Uh -huh. Of course, those who are disadvantaged because they have not been verified uh, it is not out of their making, uh, and the policy would take that into account at the point, point at which their applications are processed, uh, that uh, they could not be processed because the verification happened late. Uh, it was not for their fault, I mean, out of their, their, their uh, uh, fault. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other thing, of course, in relation to the challenge around paying out this pension, 
is that uh, there, there has to be information gathered on the dependence of these military veterans as they are registering for the pension. Mm -hmm. Because when a person uh, passes on, when the person dies, who is the recipient of this pension, the dependents are, would be entitled to a percentage, a fraction of that pension. It will accrue to them. So it is important that at the point when these uh, re recipients are loaded, the information about the dependents should be loaded simultaneously because you can't process dependents when the person has already died uh, with the accuracy uh, or without uh, encountering difficulties of uh, knowing who is actually a legitimate dependent and who is not. We do not want to put the department in a situation where there will be disputes mm -hmm. among those who must receive the pension after the person has died. And they very it well is, could be. Yes. And it is for that reason that all of this information has to be loaded right at the beginning when the pension gets uh, rolled out. So is there, is there capacity for that verification process? Because that one will be um, very crucial when it comes to ensuring legitimacy. The capacity to, uh, to uh, process this application is there because we now rely on uh, the government pension uh, uh, administration agency which has offices in all nine provinces. Mm -hmm. So to that extent it has increased our capacity in a very big way. What on our side becomes now easy to do is to look at the applicants and go into our database and see who are the dependents that they have registered and also to verify with them if there were no omissions on their part as far as uh, you know, getting the department to know who their dependents are. Mm. So with respect to that, uh, we are quite comfortable that we'll be able to you know, do the, verifi the, the processing of yeah. these applications quickly. And, and very quickly before we let you go, I mean you mentioned um, in terms of some of the reasons for your delay and how now the deadline has been moved again to January. Did you say the 12th or the 13th of January? What yeah. happens if, if that deadline is also not met? No, the deadline would be met. The only remaining obstacle was the tabling of the regulations in Parliament, mm -hmm. which we have now uh, uh, met. Yeah. We have now done that. Uh, so what uh, remains is uh, the processing of applications, the forms uh, that must be used for this pension. They have been designed. They are ready. Uh, and they will be put out there. So there isn't anything that's going to be holding us in jail. Okay. Thank yes. you so much. Thanks for, for coming in studio and talking to us. Let's leave it there for now. Thank you for your time. Uh, that, of course, uh, Deputy Minister of Defence, Tabang Magueta, speaking to some of the developments around the payout of military veterans.